In this edition of Influence Living, you're going to meet Veronica. She is from El Salvador and she lived through the Civil War of El Salvador. You're going to hear her amazing story. And then second, you are going to meet Alvaro. Now, Alvaro is going to tell you something very personal in his life and you're going to see what has influenced him. And then finally, you're going to meet Christopher. Christopher had it all and lost it all. And then he moved to Florida and something changed in his life. All that and much more right here on Influence Living. Welcome to this edition of Influence Living. I'm your host, Wade. Here on Influence Living, we talk to people really from around the world and we ask them, as you've gone through very difficult things, what has influenced your life? What made a difference? Have you ever noticed that some people, as they go through difficult time, they appear stronger rather than weaker? Listen, they have some stories that we can learn. Our first person that we are going to talk to is a lady by the name of Veronica. Now, originally she's from El Salvador. She went through the civil war there in El Salvador. And then she was brought to the United States by a family member, came to New York and was just spinning because of the new society, the new culture, the new language. She was so depressed, she wanted to commit suicide but then someone influenced her life. Here's her story. I was in El Salvador and I was a nurse. I was, I was living the Civil War. The Civil War became in 1981. It was a Civil War, but for me, it was okay living in El Salvador because that was my culture. That was my people. I was okay. When the papers came that we have to fly to New York, let's say, it was a trouble for me because I didn't want to come to this country, but I couldn't do anything because otherwise the visa would get lost and everything that my mom has done until then, is gonna be lost. When I came to New York, I realized the way American people live, a lot of waste, a lot, a lot of food waste in USA. Meanwhile, in my country, we were having a lot of trouble just to pass a day. It was hard for me. I was 18 years old. In my mind, I was experienced, but of course, not for a young lady. I become more and more stressed, anxiety grow up in me until the point that I became depressed, very depressed. I couldn't go back to my country. I was a minor for USA government. My mom didn't want to give me her signature for me to go back. I couldn't follow my dream to be, to be a nurse in USA because of the language barrier and all of that. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't do anything. And the depression grew up to a point that I wanted, I wanted to commit suicide. I was in New York. I tried pills. I tried many things just to get rid of everything. So the last thing that I wanted to do was to throw myself in front of a train. And I remember back then, I will make up myself black. My nails were black, my lips were black. Everything was in a scary way for people not to come be become close to me. One of my best friends, she came with my dad from El Salvador. She's Christian and she will pray for me. I remember that she said, uh, where is a church around here? I need to go to a church. She was new in New York and I knew the place. I brought her one Sunday and then she goes like, oh, stay with me. And I said, no, I don't go inside to a church. I'm allergic. I went back to work. Next Sunday, she does the same. Next Sunday, she does the same. Like the third or fourth Sunday, I go like, okay, I'll go with you. The pastor asked me if I want a, a prayer, and I said, no, thank you. He goes like, let me pray for you anyway. And I said, okay. 
I received your prayer, and I received it that day, but I didn't receive it from the bottom of my heart. One week passed, and it's a Saturday, and then my sister goes like, oh, I'm going to church, and I say, you going to church? I say, I wanna go with you. I went with her, that was that Saturday, October 17 of that year, 1987, and I went with her. And being me, being a nurse in El Salvador, I remember one of the doctors in my class, he goes, in the eye, if you see the eye from the side, for what we see, the white part that we see from the back of the eye, there is nothing. The eye is to suspend it in the air. And I asked the doctor, back then in my country, I said, how's that? He goes, the science doesn't understand why, but that's the reality. We don't know what is inside the eye. And I kept that question in my mind. I said, why a doctor doesn't know that? It was this lady giving the class. Rina was giving the class. And she goes and she repeats a, a part of the, church, of the Bible. And she said, God knows everything. And he made your eyes. And he made every single hair from your head. He knows what's going on inside your body. When she made it so clear in my mind, that I said, that's the person I've been looking for all my life, is this God that what she's talking about. So I stand up on that Saturday, and I said, can I accept Jesus? That Jesus that you're talking about? I didn't know that God. I knew Jesus by name only, all my life. So that day, I accept Jesus Christ. From that moment on, I had Nedeida, who was my mentor, who was my sister, who was the person who took care of me. She took me under her wing. I started to read the Bible, try to live the more I can from the Bible, think about Jesus, think about, and I started to change my life. It wasn't me, it was really hard. The Holy Ghost has to help me a lot. By November of that year, I was baptized with the Holy Ghost. That was tremendous change in my life. I started to speak in other tongues and my life changed dramatically. That change in my life helped me to realize that I couldn't do it alone without Jesus. Without God in my life, I couldn't do it alone. I have to go on, but with the help of the Bible, of Jesus, of the Holy Ghost, everything changed. It's, it's, a, it's a work of God in my life every single day. Veronica told us of her amazing story. Wow, what a story. Now she is successful here in the United States, has a great family, but she went through some very difficult times. But who helped her? God did. Maybe you can relate. Maybe you have not gone through a civil war like she has, but, but perhaps you've experienced tremendous amounts of depression and so forth. And I definitely suggest that you get professional help, but God also wants to help you. As Veronica found, he intervened in her life. He just reached in at her darkest moment and he lifted her up and her life has changed. Your life can change as well. How did it change? She began a relationship with Jesus Christ, who is God. And you can begin that relationship as well. You can ask God for help with me right now, right there where you are, wherever you're watching this on your phone, uh, there in Iceland or perhaps in Australia or India or here in North America, wherever you're watching this, you could pray with me right now. Come on, let's pray. Say, God, I believe in you. I believe in your son, Jesus. I know that I am a sinner. Please forgive me of all my sins. I give you my life. Lift this depression off of me. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. Now listen, you prayed the prayer and it must have come from the heart, right? So that God has heard you, but now you've got to grow up in your faith. Begin to talk to God on a daily basis. We call it prayer, like you just did. Then also begin to read about who Jesus is. Go to a Christian Bible, read in the book of John about Jesus, and you're going to see the words will jump off uh, the book from you or from your phone or wherever you read it. Download the Bible today and read it on your phone. Or would you do this also? Would you go to a local Christian church and say, listen, I want to follow Jesus. What do I do next? And if they don't help you, find a church that will. Well, here at Influence Living, we would love to know uh, that you have made that decision to follow Jesus Christ. We would love to know also of your um, story of what God has done in your life. Please write us today, email us today. You see the address right there on our screen here in Orlando. You can email me at wade at influenceliving.com. That's wade at influenceliving.com. Or you can also catch up with us on YouTube or on Facebook. Just search Influence Living. Influence Living, and you'll find other programs and you'll be able to message us there as well. We would love to hear what God has done in your life. Well, up next here on Influence Living, we're going to talk to Alvaro, and he had a question that all of us have at one point in our life or another. What about life after death? Here's his story. I was born in uh, Colombia in Bogota. I came to the U.S. to go to school and I uh, graduated from the San Francisco Academy of Art. Um, then I, uh, from San Francisco, I moved to Los Angeles. I lived there for many years. Uh, went back to Colombia, and now I'm here in, in Florida. It was about 1980. I was working for an advertising agency in Los Angeles. And um, one morning I was, I was shaving and looking at myself in the mirror as, as I shaved. And at that moment, I, there, there was something, there was a, a, a real revelation that the day that person that I was looking at dies, his soul will keep on living. And even though that body will not feel anything anymore, there will be the essence of my life which will have emotions. And, and I, because I, I was brought up Catholic, but I walked away from the Catholic Church. And, and for many years, I, I searched for, for answers. The following day, I had a business trip to uh, Chicago. And um, I, I had this hunger to find out about the real God. Not the God that I was told in the Catholic Church that was a God that was gonna punish me and he was harsh and I had to do all kinds of things to, to uh, gain his favor. No, I, I, I wanted to know, to know more. So I, I remember it was, it was so cold in Chicago, it was snowing, but I went out of the hotel, walked to a library. I was looking for a book, books that had to do with God, to, to, to find out who, who God really is. And, and I remember I bought some books, um, some philosophers. One uh, was uh, Kierkegaard, I believe he was German. And then uh, there was a philosopher from, uh, from uh, Israel. And I, and I read both of their interpretations of God. And Kierkegaard said, uh, you have to punish yourself to be able to get to God. And, 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 and the rabbi uh, of the other book says, oh no, he's gonna forgive you for whatever you do, no matter what, because he is all grace. Uh, for some reason, that, that didn't um, satisfy me. And eventually, I went to a, a church uh, called Grace Community Church in Los Angeles, um, where uh, Pastor uh, MacArthur uh, is, is, is the pastor. And I spoke to one of the pastors who spoke English and Spanish, and he explained to me about the salvation, the, the, the salvation plan. He explained to me that as a human being, I was here, the Lord God was here, and there was a void, there was a huge void. In the middle, we were separated and, and because of our sin, and the only way to get to him was through a bridge, and that bridge was Jesus in the cross. So it, it, it right away, I, get, I was convinced. So I believe the Holy Spirit convinced me that day. 
Uh, the only the only thing uh, drawback that day uh, was that he told me that uh, we had to be changed. And at the time, I was really a, a man of the world. I, I was working for a, a very large advertising agency, making a lot of money. I was a ladies' man. I, I, I used to go to parties and all that. And I remember when I came out of that meeting, it was evening, I went to pick up my car. And I looked up onto the heavens and I said, uh, God, I, I was explained today who you are and you're a holy God. And I don't know if I'm going to ever be able to serve you because I, I, love, I love my lifestyle. I love to party and I love all these things. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to. The following day, I went to work and my secretary called me and says, um, what happened to you? And I said, nothing, why? She, she said, there is something different about you today. And I said, I, I don't know, what do you mean? She says, there is something about you, in, in you. What, what have you done? And I said, no, the only thing I've done is I accepted Jesus as my savior last night. And then I didn't know that she was uh, a Jewish person that was taught about Jesus before. And because of that, she eventually became a born again Christian. We are still friends, her and her, her husband, they're Jewish and they're Christians. So after that, the Lord answered that, that uh, I don't know if it was a prayer when I said, Lord, I, I don't think I'm gonna be able to serve you because you know, I, I like all these things. All of a sudden, because at that time, excuse me, at that time, I thought that I had to do it on my own, on my own strength. And that's why I was honest with him and say, I don't think I can do it. But what I didn't know, and nobody explained that except the Holy Spirit put it in me, is that he will change you from the inside out. I trust that you're enjoying this edition of Influence Living. I want to let you know about something, particularly if you're interested in, in serving God uh, around the world in different places. We have partnered here at Influence Living with a missions organization by the name of World Missions Today. And we are looking for missionaries, either for uh, short-term missionaries or long-term missionaries. If you are interested, go to worldmissionstoday.net. That is worldmissionstoday.net for more information. Well, thanks for watching Influence Living. I trust that you're enjoying our program and I trust that you enjoyed Alvaro's story. Up next here in Influence Living, we're going to talk to Christopher. Now, Christopher is a first-generation American who lost it all while he was in Atlanta and then has gained so much because God has influenced his life. Here's his story. My name is Christopher Hellis, born in Brooklyn, New York. Moved to Jersey when I was about six months old. I'm the youngest of four siblings, so that was a crazy experience growing up in a, in a household, being the youngest. I, I seen a lot going on and um, been through a lot. Having immigrant parents from Haiti and them only having Haitian culture, but me being influenced by TV, media, and being Americanized. I just felt like I lived a double identity my whole life. You know, who I was outside of the home, like feeding into certain things in the world, and then who I was when I came home, and who my parents saw me as, and who they raised me to be. I had, a, I always had a conscious background of Jesus and, and, and God and, uh, and most of the biblical stories, but not being there consistently, it made me disconnected from it spiritually. You know, I, I had a lot of head knowledge of God, but I didn't really ever feel it in my heart. We moved around a lot as a kid. Um, the, the place that I really connected to and call home is Newark, New Jersey. Um, inner city, it's a rough place to grow up in. Um, you see a lot, you go through a lot. Around 13, 14, I had lost communication with my father. Um, moving up there, I guess things had happened between him and my mom and their relationship really soured to the point where I had no communication with him for a number of years throughout my teenage life. Right going into my teenage years, I'm trying to figure out manhood, I'm trying to figure out girls, trying to navigate high school, drugs, partying, sex, all these different temptations, and I don't have my father there. 
I have my mother who's, you know, working to take care of the family and her energy mentally, spiritually, and emotionally is being put in so many different areas that I kind of, I felt like I fell through the cracks a little bit and I had to raise myself on my own, especially during those years. My brother, uh, although we didn't have the closest relationship, he was still my older brother. So there was that, that always that factor of protection and, and safety being around him. So he kind of became my father figure. This happened for, I guess, the first two years until around 16 years old. The most dramatic experience of my life happened when my sister passed away. She was only 26 and I'm 26 now. So just thinking about how short life can be and her leaving behind two children, um, it, it just hit me hard. It made me confused and I was already somewhat confused and angry about my father and my mother and different situations about how I grew up. For this to happen, it was, it quickly spiraled into me shaking my fist at God. Like, why, why, why are you doing this to me? Why are you picking on me? and I just became angry. That is how I characterized the last like three years of my teenage years. I lost myself completely, my character. I started to dabble into smoking marijuana. I cared nothing about school anymore. Like I was a straight A honor roll student all the way up until about freshman year. Then it started to dip off, but by the time my sister passed away, I was kind of done with school, you know. I was the kid in the back of the class who knew all the answers, didn't raise his hand, didn't want to get credit, didn't hand in papers, had them in my locker, had it finished and probably would have got a B or an A or something like that on it, but just left it in my locker because I didn't want to hand it in. I finally got to a point where I realized I did have something to live for once I realized that I had a very unique talent, which was music. The words started to captivate me. The stories that some of the rappers would, would tell in their music, it drew me in and I could connect with it deeply. Music is what saved my life. You know, mu um, music is what started to open my mind up to theology, philosophy, and the search for God. And as I started to write things, I would literally have goosebumps and be shaking, like where did that come from? The drive of that dream is what pushed me along into living life, just waking up in the morning and wanting to wake up. As I'm navigating the music world, I have life still going on, you know. I'm, at this point, I'm 20, 21, turning 22, and all my friends are graduating college, they're getting degrees, they're, you know, tackling and conquering some things in the real world. And here I am at Panera Bread or this place, just like flipping burgers, working menial jobs. As things started to happen, I realized that Okay, I feel like I'm meant to impact the world through my words, but maybe it's not hip hop. Maybe it's not being a rapper. In 2018, in, a, in June, I made uh, the boldest decision of my life to just leave everything, leave my entire life in New Jersey and go to Atlanta. It was just my faith in understanding that I have to take big risk if I want big rewards. I just, I went for it and it was, it was a great experience being there and I think that was the, the main transition from me having a comfortable life in New Jersey to coming down to Orlando where, I'm, where I am now and just the faith that I showed in God and his support in providing housing, food, uh, shelter, clothing, everything that I needed on that journey in Atlanta just surviving, it showed me that I am loved. I am supported, like God has my back. So it warmed me back up to the idea of coming to him and surrendering whatever power I thought I had, whatever authority over my own life I thought I had. I'm like, I'll do way better partnering with God than doing this on my own. So I left my entire life in Jersey and the only thing I had to like, I guess, stabilize my life and that I was familiar with was my girlfriend, the relationship. And when that was taken away from me, I hit a rock bottom point. And just being there, I remember having a distinct phone call with my mother where I told her, like, I, I don't have anything else. Like, I, I'm, I'm intelligent, I'm smart, I'm crafty, but I can't scheme my way out of this. Like, I'm at the end of my road. And she's like, come to Orlando, come stay with me. Coming here to Orlando, the first thing I knew that I needed to do before anything else, before trying to make friends, be in another relationship, or uh, make professional connections and, and get money, the first thing I knew I needed to do was get right with God. Coming down here and really finding Jesus, it made the sacrifice of the cross 
a deeper sacrifice, especially for me, to realize that Jesus laid down his life for me, knowing all the things that I've done, knowing all the sin that I was living in, um, knowing all the decisions I've made, for him to lay down his life, it meant a lot for me. And it wasn't until acknowledging the life of Jesus that I started to find my life. I started to find my purpose once I fully understood his purpose. The purpose of his death became the per it gave me purpose to my life. I, I, I always tell people, you know, I was a lost soul. I asked a stranger for directions and then I found Jesus. Like that was my journey. Well, Christopher told us how that he ended up losing everything, but actually he found everything when he found Jesus Christ. Maybe you've lost everything like Christopher has. Maybe not all your physical possessions, but maybe you've lost all hope. I want to offer to you the hope of Jesus Christ. There is hope in Jesus Christ. And, and the way that you find that hope is you believe in Jesus, put your faith in him. Admit that you're a sinner. We're all sinners, myself included. I need Jesus. And you could just say this with me right now from your heart, as Christopher would have done. You could say, Jesus, come on, say it with me right now. Let's say it to God. Jesus, I believe in you. I know that you are God. And I know that you died for my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my life. In Jesus' name, amen. It's as simple as that. You can begin the journey. Now you've got to grow up in your faith. And if you meant that from your heart, now you have the hope of Jesus. And now begin to read about Jesus in the Christian Bible. Go to the book of John. How about um, pray, talk to God on a daily basis. It's just communicating with God. Just begin to do that as a part of your regular routine. Find a local Christian church and ask them to grow you up in your faith. And one more thing here at Influence Living, we would love to hear from you. There are the details on your screen, our mailing address here in Orlando, Florida, as well as our email address, wade at influenceliving.com. That's wade at influenceliving.com. We would love to hear what God has done in your life. If you've got your own God story like these on this program, we would love to hear it. Please send us an email and, and we would uh, enjoy that as well. And we'll be praying for you also. Let us know how we can pray for you. Well, that about does it for this edition in, of Influence Living. I trust that you've enjoyed it. Listen, if you're ever in the Orlando, Florida area, I pastor a church by the name of Greenway Church. So you can go to greenwaychurch.com, greenwaychurch.com, and join us some Sunday. You'll see our various campuses as well as our service times. We would love to have you join us. Or you could even join us online as well on Facebook and on YouTube. Search Greenway Church. We would love to have you. Have a great rest of the day. Until next time, bye-bye.